Episode 10 ends on a brilliant cliffhanger set up for a season two. So they're offering a ton of money and full relocation services, get this. For all of us to move to beautiful. Where the heck are the Garcias going next? I would tell you if I knew, <laughs> um, but I don't. <laughs> Jeffrey, I'm looking at you. Where are the Garcias moving? Uh, you might want to look at another Jeff that's in the room for that. Because... <laughs> Is he here? Can you pull him in? We want some tea. My lips are sealed. Oh, my <laughs> sealed. You, tell us. you cannot torture me and get it out of me. My, my <laughs> own wife doesn't know. Oh, wow. Man. So you're really key. Now, Jeff knows and has an idea. Does the cast know? They do not. They do not, Don't. nobody knows except me. So Jeffrey, you went in and you read that line and, and you, you delivered it, but you have no idea where the show's There's going no next? He has no idea. Wow, I have some ideas. So we going to Silicon we'll hear Valley? We'll... Are we going to Texas? Exactly. Every part of Mexico? It's truly a cliffhanger. <laughs> I just spoke with Jeff, your um, your EP, and he said not a soul knows, but he knows, not even his wife knows. Do you oh, have... no, no, it's a, it's a thing, it's a thing, like oh. it's a thing. Are you pestering him? Do you have ideas? Of course, girl. Of course we're pestering him. Everybody is pestering him. But we are we are fingers crossed for season two. And listen, there are worse places to film and we, we will just have to see. We are just as much uh, out of the loop on that as the audience will be when they're watching it. Maybe okay. you know more than us. <laughs> Where would you like to see your character go in season two? For my character, I feel like this season one was really like getting close to the family and spending this time with them. So I would love to see her like explore that comfortableness and just get goofy and whatnot. Definitely more experiencing uh, and seeing more family stuff and then also seeing her start to follow her dreams and stuff like that. And I think for Carlos, you know, he's starting to to understand his daughters and they're at a pivotal age in their lives. And um, I think just getting closer to them and and really supporting them understanding what they like what they're about uh these little human beings you know where do you want to see lorena go in a season two? Oh, ooh, that is such a good question i would hope that like she doesn't lose her dramatics mm -hmm. and she figures out her work-life balance that's so hard for so many women especially women in media and digital and you know that are faces of a network or or a company so i hope that like that struggle becomes a little bit less and still hilarious oh. getting there but you know and more paul more paul cutie pie oh what a, what a dream boat i want to continue uh representing my community in the best way i want to tell people that it is possible that there is a way and um i just want you to know that be different it's okay I think for season two, uh, George needs to lose some of his power. I don't want to say anything more than that, but I think uh, George is pretty on top uh, for season one. And I think it'd be really interesting direction to go where uh, maybe George isn't so much on top with things. Maybe some, some humble pie. Some humble flan. Humble flan. I cannot believe it's been 18 years since we saw you, of course, on the Brothers Garcia. Now here we are in 2022, the birth of the Garcias. How did this all happen? Not overnight, <laughs> but um, but I'm definitely glad that it did because, uh, you know, the, the original show was, was probably one of my favorite experiences as a young child actor, to be able to get the opportunity to relive it and, and meet new cast members and have a wife and two girls now, you know? The, when I found out that I have a wife and, and kids, I was so stoked, you know? Like it's, it's <laughs> a difference from my actual real life. So um, it's just great. It was crazy because I was just concerned about, you know, the show coming back, the show coming back. And then when we were actually going to do it, I had to be like, Okay, so who is George again? Because George's life has, has taken, you know, various turns that mine haven't. Um, I, I'm not a father. I'm not a husband. I am not a tech mogul. Um, so I, 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 I'm doing all right, but I don't have a mansion in Mexico. Uh, so I had to figure that out. As soon as I was in the auditions with, with Nizia, I was like, okay, that's, that's definitely my wife. When I got down there, I was like, okay, I feel really, so, I feel really supportive of Nizia. I want to be able to, to, to help her out and everything that she needs. And as soon as I met, you know, Maeve, who plays my daughter, Victoria, I was like, okay, I'm very protective of her. Nobody hurt her. 
and I'm gonna make sure that everything that like she has everything that she needs. And then as far as being rich, I, I just had to step into the mansion and then just be like, yeah, this is my place. Welcome everyone to my home, but don't touch anything. You as a newscaster, I mean, you literally had me crying tears of laughter. It was it was just hilarious seeing you go toe to toe with, um, how, how do we describe your colleague? Not not a great my, colleague. My arch nemesis. Your arch nemesis. Jeremy, who plays my, my quote unquote arch nemesis, is literally one of the nicest people in the world. And so when we were like both on set, he'd be like, God, I'm so mean to you. Like, I feel gross. I was like, but you're nailing it, dude. And like, what's really special is he played a character from the original show, um, as did my husband, Paul Rodriguez on the show. So when we were trying to cast my husband, I was like, um, Paul Rodriguez Jr., cutie pie. Why are we not like entertaining this? And so um, Jeff made the call and lo and behold, they were like, congrats, you got Paul Rodriguez Jr. And he, he's been, he was just wonderful and lovely. And you know, Oliver who plays my son, Max, um, was a big fan of Paul. So like to watch him be a little like starstruck was just the, like the cutest. This is my first opportunity in the American television. So it's my first show in English. So I was terrified at the beginning. And Bobby, thank you so much. And Bobby was the one who said since like day one, like we got this, don't worry, you can do it. And I remember when we were about to shoot the first scene, uh, we were rehearsing and he made me feel so comfortable, like, okay, we can run lines and we can do this and that. And that's something that it's really nice because you can really see the love on screen. And that's why we really have this love off screen. Elsha, what a wonderful addition you've been to the show. What yeah. was it like joining this big happy family? Before I had met everyone, it was definitely a little bit intimidating because I was like, oh, this show, like people love it. And it's like uh, been historic and oh my God, I'm so nervous. But then as soon as I met them, like it was just so easy. They're a family, they're so welcoming. And then the kids on set, there's something about kids being on set. You just feel good, you know? So it was great. I can assume that you guys feel like you hit the lotto with Trinity. I mean, what a fantastic actress you are, Trinity. And I think it's it's wild that the show, The Brothers Garcia, it was airing before you were even born. <laughs> yeah. So did, what did you do to prepare? Did you go back into the archives and watch old episodes? Yeah, I mean, definitely like before there's been questions like, oh, did you watch The Brothers Garcia? And I was like, that's before my time. <laughs> but, uh, I did definitely go back and watch some clips and of course love the show. Yeah. The hardest part was finding a, a VCR player, huh? 